here. So I am the CEO of Hope Education Services, and I am passionate about helping families, just like yours, help their children with autism get the most of ABA. So I come on here, and I make these free parent training videos so you can help your child to achieve excellence in all areas of their life. So every week, and sometimes more than once a week, this is the second one this week, I post free videos that's based on questions that you like parents like you ask me on my YouTube channel, parenttrainingvideos.com. So here's a question that I got recently from a parent, and that was actually based on a previous video I did about the difference between primary and secondary reinforcers on how to choose a reinforcer for your child's ABA therapist that'll help them be really super successful and be really effective without being a distraction. So let's talk a little bit about what a reinforcer is, just in case this is your first time here and you haven't yet heard about it. So a reinforcer is a small reward that's given to a child during an ABA session after a behavior occurs to make it more likely for it to occur again. So naturally, we have all sorts of reinforcers. For example, if you go to work, you get a paycheck. Well, that's a reinforcer. Chances are you wouldn't be going to work if you didn't get a paycheck. Or even just simple, simple, like going to the supermarket. When you give them your money, the reinforcer is you're getting your food out of the supermarket. So this is something that occurs naturally in every day in every part of our lives. Sometimes people ask, well, are we bribing the children? Well, you can look at it that way. But the truth is, is that oftentimes children with autism don't know what a correct response is. So when we give them a reinforcer, what it does is shows them they're engaging in the proper behavior. So in ABA, we have something called discrete trial training. So discrete trial training has what's called a three-term contingency, an A, a B, and a C. So the A stands for the antecedent, the B stands for the behavior, and the C stands for the consequence. So the consequence is where the reinforcer comes in. So this may sound super complicated, and the words kind of are, but it's actually pretty simple. So the antecedent would be something simple, like, for example, if I held up this picture of a book and I said, well, what is it? That was the antecedent. The behavior is the child should say, it's a book, and the consequence would be you would give them a reinforcer. So the more, well, first of all, what is a reinforcer? A reinforcer is anything that is motivating or that a child wants. So a reinforcer may change from one day to another day. Let's say, for example, you're like you, you just had a big, big meal, and let's say you really love cookies. Well, a cookie may not be a reinforcer if you're not hungry but maybe it will be. Or maybe one day you're not in the mood for cookies, you're in the mood for something salty and you want potato chips. So it's not, you can't assume anything is a reinforcer. It's only a reinforcer if someone wants it. But anything that they want can serve as a reinforcer. Food can be a reinforcer. Time with the phone can be a reinforcer. A high five can be a reinforcer. Tickles can be a reinforcer. Anything that makes a child happy, anything that they're willing to work for, will be a reinforcer. Now, sometimes the, you need a really strong reinforcer if an activity is difficult to engage in or if a child is learning it for the first time and they're really unclear what a response is. So let's just think about it, right? So if you had you know, a job where you, were, you really, really loved it, it was super simple, let's say that someone was gonna pay you to drink margaritas next to a pool. Well, chances are, I might not need to be paying you a lot of money to convince you to sit next to a pool and drink a margarita. But let's say that um, instead, I was going to you know, require you to go in the pool and to like vacuum the bottom and you have to like wear this like special mask to go in the pool. I'm, I don't even know where I came up with that example, but that sounds like a whole lot less fun. Well, I would probably need to be paying you a lot more for you to get in that pool and do the dirty work than to be sitting and drinking the margarita. So for kids, it's pretty much the same thing. If something is simple and easy for them, they're usually willing to work with not much more than, hey, great job or hey, you know what, you did really well, awesome, give me a high five, or you know what, we're gonna, in five minutes, we're gonna finish this work and take a break. But if something's really simple or really, or excuse me, something's really complicated and they don't really know what they're doing, they may need a reinforcer, they may need like that actual response. So there's always a reinforcer, but they might need something more tangible. So in ABA, we have something called a primary reinforcer, which is anything that's really food or drink, and then a secondary reinforcer, which is really anything a child learns over time to like, like, for example, the phone. 
So here is the thing. When you're keeping in mind choosing a reinforcer, there's some things to keep in mind. Number one is it shouldn't be something that you have to take away. Let's just like pretend this um, book is like a child's favorite train and they really love that train and they're pushing it. Maybe it's even a stem for them, right? If they have autism and they perseverate over this train. Giving them the train as a reinforcer may not be a good idea because it might be really difficult to get back from them. They might get really upset and throw a tantrum. So usually what we'd like to do is give reinforcers that are consumable, which are primary reinforcers, things the child eats. That way when they're done with it, they're done with it, right? They just move on and ask for the next thing. So something small um, and something small that the child can just consume is a really good idea. So for example, blueberries. If your child engages a correct response and they love blueberries, you can give them a blueberry as a reward and they eat it, it's really quick, and then you move on to the next thing. So an example of something you would not want to use is like a lollipop. If you ever try to get a lollipop out of a child's mouth, trust me, if I had parents give me that as a reinforcer, it doesn't work. Number one, it gets sticky, it gets messy, it's yucky, they like wind up biting it and arguing with it, it's just, no, you don't want to go there. So pick something that's small, something that's consumable that you can give your child. Pretzels are a really good idea, something like goldfish are a really good idea, blueberries, almonds, something that's really fast that they can eat right away. So you also don't want to do something that's going to take a lot of time to get to a child. Studies show that a reinforcer actually needs to be given to a child after a behavior within half a second for that be from the time that behavior occurred in order for the child to neurologically associate it with the behavior they're being rewarded for, which means you don't have a lot of time. The other thing you want to just keep in mind is not picking things that are super messy. So your child might really, really love M&Ms, and, and that's fine, and those are they're small, especially the little tiny package ones um, but if they're melting and they're sticky and they're getting on everything and then they make your fingers colors I personally don't think anything that makes your fingers different colors should go in your body anyway but I mean that's a sidebar you know in general you want to try to keep things clean right and not make a big mask because then your therapist is going to be wiping your child's hands and the stimulus is going to be sticky and it's just going to take more time and you're going to get less trials and so giving your child something that's not gonna make a super big mess. The other thing to keep in mind is that you wanna pick something healthy. So typically, when you're doing an ABA session, kids are typically eating a lot of snacks um, because they're doing a lot in terms of reinforcement, and a lot of times we're using those primary reinforcers. You really don't want your kids to be eating things like jelly beans or like M&Ms or Skittles or candy or even like processed potato chips every day. So try to keep something simple as healthy as you possibly can. Um, ethically, right, we wanna make sure that we're not doing children harm, by sitting in a session and rewarding them for behavior, but putting tons and tons of stuff in their body that's going to make them hyper or cause them to be unhealthy or overweight. So that's something we also want to keep in mind. So another thing that works really well is a reinforcer, and I'm a big proponent of technology. I think kids love technology. Something simple like a YouTube video. If they're watching a video on YouTube, you can pause it. So you don't actually have to take it away, and you can hold it so they don't have access to it. And typically kids, they really want you to press play, so they're really motivated to engage in that behavior right away to get you to press play again. So YouTube videos are can be a phenomenal um, reinforcer. Those are a secondary reinforcer. You know, as ABA therapists years ago, we told parents there's only really primary reinforcers that worked well. And actually, I think that's changed over time because all kids seem to really love YouTube videos and that actually seems to be working really, really well. Also, so the other thing just to keep in mind, and this is my final tip, if you're going to be using a reinforcer in an ABA session, some people say that you can never give your child access to that reinforcer in a different contingency because it will make it not work and they'll get confused or they won't want the reinforcer and it'll mess up the whole session. I don't know. That, that just sounds a little bit extreme to me. Like I said, I've been doing this for 11 years. I find that like if, if a child wants something to eat, they want something to eat. If they want, you know, to the, watch their video on YouTube, they don't really care that they had the phone an hour before they're still gonna want it so you do want to limit limit right we're not gonna say completely avoid and go crazy and like as a parent and drive yourself nuts over making sure your child never ever ever gets that reinforcer during um, outside of your ABA session but you want to limit it so let's just use common sense if your child is gonna be using food as a reinforcer in your session don't give them the biggest snack they've ever had in their entire life right before the session occurs because chances are they're not really gonna want it but also let's not like skip breakfast breakfast and lunch and make sure that they're absolutely starving so they're you know going to be ravaging over these potato chips your therapist is going to be giving your child let's just use a degree of common sense you know if you're going to use bubbles as a reinforcer 
probably not a good idea to play with them right before the session takes place. But that doesn't mean the next day or later in the night and you're in the bathtub or you're at the park, you can't blow bubbles for your child. So just a little degree of common sense goes a really long way when picking a reinforcer. So I hope that this video was super helpful. I hope for the parent that sent that question in, how do I choose an effective reinforcer that after watching this, you know um, you're prepared on giving your ABA therapist the best reinforcers and really making sure your child gets the most out of these sessions. So if you are one of my many followers and you're one of my many loyal listeners, I would love, thank you so much for coming back here every week. I really have so much gratitude. It's a passion of mine to come on here and help families like yours. And I just really am grateful for you trusting me to be your guide. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. And I really hope that I get to, to talk to you again via this channel. You can find the rest of my videos at Parent Training Video. Videos.com. I would love to connect with you via there. If you have any questions, you're wondering, how do I get to be one of those parents who make the questions for these videos? Well, I read and respond to all of the comments on these videos. So simply all you need to do is write in the comment of this on the YouTube video, or if you're watching this on my Facebook channel, Hope Education Services, you could do it right in the chat here now or right on the comment of this post. Simply just post your question. Um, what I do, I have these little index cards and I always keep them on my decks. And these are questions that parents have sent in. Anytime I have a few free moments, what I do is I grab one of those cards and I just do a quick video for you. So I really hope that helps. One last announcement. I would love to give you a gift, either because you're a loyal listener or because you're here for the first time and I want to welcome you. I just want you to know, again, how much I appreciate you. If you go to my website, Hope educationservices.com. There's a section where you can click on free resources and you can get an ebook for free just because I really want to help your family. I have a book on there about potty training, a book on there about getting your child to try new foods, a book on there about helping your child who, with autism that's starting school for the first time, a book about increasing self-esteem and self-awareness that's more for higher functioning children who are a little bit older that maybe have been bullied and uh, helping them to get past that, develop some social skills. Uh, there's also the first chapter of my book, um, A Parent's Introduction to ABA, you can go on there, pick whatever book you want, and download it for free. Just put in your email, and I will email to you. So that's just my way, again, of giving back to you. Again, thank you so much for coming on here. Um, make it an amazing week. God bless, and I really just hope these videos help your family. Take care.